Um, so we are back with part two of the Central Park Five episode. If you have not heard the first part, um, go back and listen to that so, <laughs> so that you won't be completely lost. Um, but this one's going to be a good one. So buckle up. I was doing the rewind, not the hurry up, just so you guys know. <laughs> and I should probably hurry up. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, so we are back. Um, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight up tired. This working full time and doing this podcast is a lot. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. And it's it's once again hot, but it's, it's going to get better. We, mm, we no. got... <laughs> Not outside, but inside. <laughs> hopefully, we got we got plans to get it fixed. We got plans. All right. Um, so I think we should probably just jump right in. Yeah. So um, this this one is our uh, refresh my memory here. This one is. I'm gonna do a recap. Well, that way we can kind of know. Okay, you might have this in your recap. Then I was gonna say, is this where we talk about the other side of the case? Um. Or? So this is where we're gonna get into the suspect. The sus okay. That is not the five boys that were in jail okay. for all that time. Gotcha. <clears throat> so let's do a little recap. Um, 28-year-old Trisha Melee was found in Central Park in the early morning hours of April 20th, 1989. She was barely alive. She had been beaten badly and was very badly essayed. She survived but had no memory of the attack. 30 to 40 young men were in the park that night, uh, basically causing trouble. Out of those boys, five teens were held and tried on the SA of Trisha. There were taped confessions from the boys, but they say to this day that they were coerced and that they did not do this crime. They were convicted of this and served time. So that all brings us to 2002. Uh, interesting side note, I just thought about it when you said that in like 30 to 40 boys that's basically the size of my entire high school graduating class <laughs> don't spit your water out <laughs> um so that literally my entire high school graduating class roaming central park is like a weird like i can actually picture it now because mm -hmm. i saw us all at graduation and hey this is pathetic <laughs> <laughs> Which part? The part that the my class is that small. But uh, now I can imagine how many people that was. And that's just so weird. That's a big group. That is a very big group. And for them all to have, like, done something up there and had all been watched together. Something at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, <laughs> I don't have 30 to 40 friends. <laughs> I don't know. And there was this was a time before social media, so it wasn't like, hey, let's all meet in social yeah, park. It wasn't like a park. it wasn't like a flash mob where it was like everybody get together and dance. Right. That would have ended a lot better. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to 2002. Now, this is where some just craziness happens. But first, let's talk about the year leading up. So in 2001, Corey Wise, one of those five men um, or boys, was serving time at Auburn Correctional Facility in upstate New York. While there, he exchanged some words with a man named Mateus Reyes. Shortly after this, in the same year of 2001, Reyes contacted officials and told them that he, in fact, committed the SA in the beating against Trisha. So this is year one of him being in prison. That um, You said the year that it happened, right? Okay, so what were you saying was the year? So you said, you said like the year of something, this person said it, and I was like, was it the year they got arrested that... Uh, Corey found this out from Matias, or like, was it like way into a sentence, or I don't know. I um, it was into his sentence because remember, all of these boys did complete all of their sentences right. for this attack. So this was kind of into um them serving, right. I guess. Um, and Matias Reyes had been in there for another crime. Gotcha. <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't know. I guess for some reason in my head, I got it 
in my brain that it was like right after he got into prison, someone else was like, yeah, haha, you did, you know, right you in prison and I actually did it. <clears throat> so we're going to get more into all of that in a little bit, but I want to dive deeper into who Mateus Reyes was. And when I say dive deep, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Um, we are diving deep. So buckle up. It gets crazy. Um, okay, so Mateus Reyes was born in Puerto Rico in 1971 and moved to New York City as a child. Um, I am not going to get like super into like his childhood background because there's not a ton. Um, but in school, reports described him as being emotionally disturbed. He later told psychiatrists that he had been SA'd as a small child. He had a very dark past and it was very violent, but it doesn't come out in the media, basically. Um, all of it was pretty much between him and his psychiatrist, which, okay, you know, like that's his business. Um, in 1989, at the time of the Central Park attack, he was working as a deli clerk in Upper Manhattan. He was considered a loner. And he spent his nights sleeping in a van near the store. So that's um, somebody who's violent. I mm -hmm. really don't want to be a deli clerk. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm I'm just saying. Like, I mean, it's better than being, like, a dentist or. I mean, yeah, I guess. But, like, <laughs> he's literally chopping up meat. Like, yeah. that's his job. Like, that doesn't make me feel good. Right. Um, it's very Dahmer. Yeah. It's giving me Dahmer vibes. Um, so yeah. Mateus committed his first crime when he was only 17. Her name was Jackie. She was 27 and she was on her lunch break from work on September 21st, 1988. She saw a church nearby. So she decided to go in and just pray on her lunch break. Um, she was walking out of the church when a young man approached her. That's when someone grabbed her from behind one hand over her mouth the other over her neck and told her to shut up and not scream. Otherwise he would kill her. He had a knife. He took her into a stairwell and told her to take off all of her clothes. Thinking on her feet, Jackie told him she had an infection that he didn't want to catch. She did not in fact have an infection. This was a ruse, but it worked. Incredible on her. Yeah. Um, and then second of all, man, I'm just I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, I, I, she was going to church on her lunch break. To I mean, pray. she's, yeah. Uh, yeah, she already seems like she's like, you know, like she's a good person. Like, mm -hmm. that's what you're doing with your lunch break. And then that happens to her. That's messed up. And like, he had to have been close to the church probably to, yeah, to do that. So, I mean, he was waiting outside of a church is pretty bad. Yeah. So yeah, all things there are pretty bad, but good on her. Like, that's mm -hmm. good thinking. It may not always work, but it did in this instance. It's um, worth trying. After she told him that she had this infection, he said, I don't want your body. Forget it. He told her to lie down on the concrete floor, face down for a few minutes. After he left, she went for help and survived. Good for her. So she wasn't... Um, attack. I mean, she was attacked, but she, yeah, this was his first it crime. Been and worse. It could have been a lot worse. Yep. So this was in 1988, one year before the attack, the attack on Trisha. So just remember that. Mm -hmm. And I try to update you as we go here because there's a lot of crimes. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> um, his next known attack occurred on April 17th, 1989. This was two days before Trisha's attack. A woman was doing um, Tai Chi near the Lacer Rink at the northern end of Central Park. A 28-year-old woman was by herself in the middle of the afternoon. Um, he approached her and asked her a question, probably where something was. Um, she began to walk away because she was scared and he was creepy. Mm -hmm. um, he attacked her, tearing off her clothes and started to SA her. She screamed. A man nearby came to see what was happening, and he, the attacker, ran off. This so that was, was the second night crime. Too? Um, I think it was during the mi middle of the day. Like, yeah. she was doing Tai Chi. Yeah, that's kind of so what I was, I was, was thinking. So I think it was just, like, afternoon in the park. 
Right. I felt like that'd be a weird thing to be doing at night, I guess. But Right. Well, so when I think of a park, I kind of think of an open area because we have a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I think Central Park has a lot of trees. So I think yeah. like he was going to maybe like take her to a wooded park. Right. Because that's what happened with, um, um, I forgot her first name. Trisha. Uh, Trisha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, um, they drug her. Yeah. yeah right. Um, so, yeah. But I think <laughs> by the skate rink part that, that's kind of weird because that is probably pretty open and pretty visible. Yeah. I and mean, maybe it's in the summer and nobody was there, but I don't know. It just seems like a place that would be highly populated. Yep. Um, so investigators never connected Trisha's SA to the similar attack that had occurred just two days earlier. So let me say that again. Investigators never connected Trisha's SA to the very similar park attack that had happened just two days earlier. Yep, two days. Yep. I mean, I, at least you suspect him <laughs> mm-hmm. at that point. I mean. Yep, it's an attack, um, ASA in Central Park. And if they hadn't arrested him, like if they hadn't caught him at that point, then they know he's still out there. Mm-hmm. So I know Central Park is big and there are several crimes that happen in a short period of time. But I'm never going to Central Park. <laughs> right. Everyone's like, hey, I'm in the park now. Um, I think they just had their sights set on the boys um, that they didn't even go back and look yeah. or try. Um, Which happens a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Um, because they did not catch or link Mateus Reyes to this crime, He continued, Um, this is really sad because it could have stopped here with just Mm -hmm. a couple of crimes, but it escalates and it gets a lot worse. it usually does. Yep. Um, So in the next couple of months, he assaulted five more women. Mm -hmm. Um, He forced his his way into their apartments. He was dubbed the East Side Slasher. Um, He was like a whole nother thing other than what Trisha Trisha's crime was. Right. Um, so I did not put Trisha's attack in here because we already went over that. Right. But that is just one of the many, many crimes that he committed. Yeah. Um, and like I said, he assaulted five more women. Um, he, (laughs) he was just on a rampage and it could have been stopped at Trisha's. And that's what I think is just so sad for me. I mean, it, it could have even been stopped. It, it should have been stopped or at least slowed down before that. Because if they would have caught him on the first two that he did, mm-hmm. they, he would have at least given him some jail time. And it would have, you know, it, I don't know, maybe like had them have their eyes on him, had it cooled off, you know, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. All right, so um, April 19th, 1989, uh, that was Trisha's attack. Um, Two months after that, he laid low. June 11th, 1989, um, this was an unnamed person. Um, She decided to not go public. It's totally fine. Yep. Uh, Her apartment buzzer sounded, not once, but several times. She asked who it was. He said he was the son of the building superintendent. She let him up because she believed him. Um, Over the next two hours, he raped this woman three Mm -hmm. times. Um, He slashed her in the eyes with a kitchen knife. He tried to drown her in the bathroom sink. Then he left her there to die. And she figured she probably would. Mm -hmm. But after all of that, she got the strength up to get up and walk out of her apartment and get help. Good for her. I can't even imagine how yeah. hard that would be. So he's escalating a lot. Yeah. Um, and he's being successful in these, and it's, it's kind of sickening. Yeah. Um, okay, so on the night of June 13th, 1989, um, you have Lordeus Gonzalez. Now, I'm going to refer to her as Gonzalez because I'm not sure I'm pronouncing her first name right. I am so sorry if I am not. This is not my language, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, but I'm trying. I'm doing the best. Right. <laughs> um, I want to get it right. So, yeah. Um, okay. So, 
she was 24 um, and she had just told the love of her life, Antonio, that she was pregnant again. Um, they had celebrated the announcement, even though it was unexpected. Um, Antonio had um, an older boy who was seven and she had an older boy who was six. And then they together had a little baby who was three months old. Um, so they weren't really planning on having right, another one so soon, on another one, yeah. but they were happy. Um, Antonio got up and went to work in the morning like usual. Um, it was a morning pretty much like any other in their household. Um, the boys were in their living room um, and there was a knock at the door. His mom called from the kitchen where she was with the baby um, for the oldest one to see who it was. He opened the door. There was a man, man with light skin, hair short, wearing dark blue pants, a white and blue short sleeve shirt and white sneakers. He asked if the superintendent was there. The boy looked up at the man um, and said, no, the super was his father and he wasn't there. Then without hesitation, the man just barged in. Mm. Uh, the boy was scared and said he was too big for him to stop him. Um, the man then asked if he had any change um, and there was none to give him. So uh, it was, I'm sure, a little bit scary. Right. Um, <clears throat> after hearing some noise, Gonzalez came out of the kitchen. She picked up the baby and handed it to the boys, telling them to go to their shared bedroom and lock the door. Mm -hmm. um, Gonzalez was a little woman, but she put up a big struggle. Um, the next five minutes passed. Um, the little boy said later he didn't hear anything. Um, my mother closed the door. The only thing I heard was the man's voice threatening her. I'll take your eyes or I'll take your kids. Mm. Um, what was going on on the other side of the door was horrific. Um, Gonzalez was stabbed nine times in the chest, the abdomen, and once in the face with one of her own kitchen knives. The kids didn't hear any of this, um, which is good. Um, and they also didn't hear her being essayed. But they did hear her scream, my head, my head, I'm bleeding. Mm -hmm. And please stop. Um, and then later she said, please don't hurt my kids. You can take anything you want. Then she called him an MF, which, yeah. okay. Um, offering or ordering him to get out. Um, he did, but only after he was done with the attack. Mm. When the man fled, the boys left the bedroom. They discovered their mother was still alive, frantic, already on the telephone. Um, get help, she screamed to them. Um, then on a 911 call, she says, give me the police, please. It's an emergency. I'm bleeding to death. They said, are you inside? She said, yes, I'm cut. They said, what apartment are you in? She said, in the basement. They said, stay in the line. Let me connect you with an ambulance. Um, she said, please hurry. I'm fading. Um, they said, ma'am, are you pregnant? And she said, I'm fainting. Basement. Hurry, hurry. Mm. Um, the oldest boy hid the baby in the closet next to the hamper, swaddling her in the basket, hoping that she would be safe there. The boys ran to the elevator, but they didn't have the key to get access. Mm. And by the time they reached the first floor, their neighbor had called 911 as well. Uh, the two boys were standing outside the elevator panicking because there was no way to get back downstairs now to get their mom. Um, they said their mother was hurt. Um, Gonzalez, by this time, her face was slashed, streaking blood on her ripped shirt and pants. She staggered out of the apartment and collapsed at the elevator. She just kept mumbling that the baby was downstairs. By the time the paramedics got Gonzalez to St. Luke's Hospital, it was already too late. Mm -hmm. She would live just an hour or two more in the emergency ward before dying at 8 p.m. on June 14, 1989. She did not provide any details on her attacker, because she couldn't, but investigators and detectives knew enough to sense her killer had struck before and he would strike again. And he did. That's awful. Yeah. 
that whole thing like every part of that's all i mean it, it always is but that's just awful that story i wanted to really highlight because i think in all of this the other crimes that mateus reyes did goes unlooked mm. and they are horrible yeah um and so i really wanted to get all of these stories but definitely that one in particular out there yeah um yeah he's horrible yeah but Hopefully he's, a, he's locked up for a long time, but we'll you know. see. Yeah. Um, so then there was Amanda, July 19th, 1989. She was an art student and she was just in her apartment when a man came um, at her. Oh, she was getting into her apartment when a man came darting at her. And these are all super close together because this is July of 89. Mm -hmm. So it's like still the same year. Yep. Um, so he came darting at her, um, and then she felt the pinprick of a knife at her neck. He forced her into an apartment. Um, he essayed her several times. And then he said, I don't, or I have to kill you, or I have to blind you. Amanda made a conscious decision not to fight back. When he was done, he ripped the telephone cord out of the jack, wrapping it around Amanda's wrists and ankles, then bound her limbs together. He took what money she had in her ATM card and then began to cut around her face and her eyes. Mm. She did survive, but it was a lot. That's I so I don't even understand his logic there, and I don't really want to, but like he's what's the deal with the blinding thing? Like, not like she's gonna be like, yeah, I'm blind now, so I forgot what, what you, you looked, looked like, like before I was yeah. blind. Like <clears throat> I mean, yeah, she probably wouldn't be able to pick him out in the lineup at that point, but she could describe everything. Right. I don't know. Um, he escalates and he, he does a thing where he cuts their face. And for me, that kind of like, I don't know what psychologically. Like, to, like a trauma that he had as a kid somehow. Yes. Or he's just ashamed and doesn't want to right. see them or I mean, them I to think see I've him. I heard that or, too in other cases where they um were ashamed and so they would do certain things like they put their victims face down or whatever yep so july 27th 1989 this is the same month just a couple days later um she was unnamed uh she called 911 three times after the assault um the man had followed her into the lobby of her apartment building and then when she someone called 911 he fled um, Meg, this was August 5th, 1989. So, so again, a couple more days. Yep. Um, she was 24 and living like this single life in New York. Um, she, she said she loved just living free with her cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny you said single life. And so people probably got a specific picture and then it was like living free with my cat. Yeah. Which is probably the best single life, honestly. I Love Meg. I love her. Um, so she'd gone around the corner that Saturday afternoon to get a bagel for a late lunch. Um, and on her way back to the building, she noticed her front door was propped open. Um, she had guessed it was probably for movers. So she, she just went on. She didn't notice that a man had seen her on the street and he followed in right behind her. He watched her get into the elevator, and when he saw it stop on the third floor, he ran upstairs and knocked on the door. He forced his way in and repeatedly essayed her. Mm -hmm. He took her to the shower to clean her up and wrapped her in a white towel. And then he took all the money and cards she had. When he least expected it, she bolted out the door, and he followed chasing behind her. A janitor... This guy. Yeah. A janitor and another tenant saw the man in the lobby and saw her running from him. Um, so before he could flee, they sat on him and pinned him to a couch God. for 15 minutes until police arrived. I was, I don't know why I was picturing it with the janitor. Maybe this is just because this would have been me, but like as the janitor, I'm like, if I had a mop or something, I'd be swaying the mop <laughs> at the guy. Because if you right. see somebody wrapped up in a towel and a guy is chasing them through like the lot. Like I'm doing whatever I can to stop the person from chasing them. Right. Cause there's obviously one person's in the right and one person's in the wrong there. Yeah. I mean, if you're running like that. Yeah. Yep. 
So uh, they sat on him for 15 minutes until police arrived. Later that evening, after the cops had arrested the man and after her hospital examination, the cops asked Meg where she wanted to go. She just laughed and said the liquor store. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I love Meg. I absolutely love her. Um, so we have the police getting him in the act now. And I, I would have been a jerk when I was sitting on that dude. By yeah. the way, for 25 minutes. I would have farted I, all I could have. <laughs> I would have been like. I would have just like, as much gas as I would have been like flicking him in the face and stuff. <laughs> I would have just been like, I don't know, saying the worst stories I could. Just being like. <laughs> Like, hey, does everybody have a piece of paper? Just a million paper cuts. Like, there you go. Whatever little things that I could do to <laughs> not get in trouble, but still. <laughs> All right. So at first, Mateus Reyes denied having anything to do with any of the assaults. Um, never mind that he had been apprehended in the last victim's apartment lobby yeah, as he fled. Right. Um, but soon he admitted to the rapes and admitted to all of everything, June through August. Um, literally three months yeah um and he, right in the time what was uh what was the month on on the first one um not on the first one um on trisha's trisha's uh it was april not, okay so that's april so it's it's within that range basically i mean it's mm -hmm. not within the range but it's close to the range yep um so if you didn't hate this guy already he said that what he was doing was called making love. No. No. No, no, no. It's called being a piece of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he held off on confessing to Gonzalez's murder until the next day. Um, and then he spoke um, that his intent was to rob and then S.A. Mm, her. Yes. Um, he recalled how much she fought back and how the kids were hidden in the bedroom. Based um, on all the other things he said, I'm saying BS, but... Right. Um, he also never was asked or given up information about the Central Park rape of Trisha. So the he fact was never, he asked, never asked was... And he never said that was one. Right. So I... So maybe there's other ones that also got unreported. Yeah, we don't know how long. This so went I, on. I was waiting to ask something to see if you cover it, and I, I'm thinking you're probably at about the end of his stuff, right? Um, close, close. Yeah. What? Did, so but the fact that he was never asked, I'm guessing they never tested the DNA then of him. We'll get to that. Oh man, I thought I was like I waited long enough before I asked my question. I, I was know. like, I was like, there's no way that part's still coming. We'll what get to that. Thing. All right. Well, cool. We'll get there. <laughs> All right. Maybe it was something everybody else was thinking too. So they're like, I'm sure it was. They're like, just ask. <laughs> right. Um, because of him being caught in the act, they arrested him for the crimes and named him as the East Side Slasher. Um, his DNA was later found to match three victims, including Gonzalez. So he did do right. those Which, for sure. Yeah. Um, he accepted a plea bargain agreeing to serve 33 years to life in prison. That would put him to serve until 2022. Last year. Yep. Um, at his 1991 sentencing, before the sentence was handed down, Reyes stood up, mumbled, fucking judge, and punched his lawyer in the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but like... <laughs> What this is part wrong was with funny. This? I don't wrong? know. What is wrong with this guy? I don't know. <laughs> Did he just think like, oh man, I'm going to get away with this. Yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> he was carried out by guards and the judge said, yeah, I recommend him be imprisoned for life. <laughs> right. Yeah. I recommend the life part of that the sentence. life sentence, please. Um, so Mateus Reyes went to prison to serve his term and after all the trials, the Central Park Five boys, Antron McRae, 15, Kevin Richardson, 14, Yusuf Salam, 15, Raymond Santana, 14, Corey Wise, 16, all went to serve their time as well. So this overlaps them serving right. their time. Now, from all the research of what it says, I guess Corey and Mateus got into a fight while in prison together over a television while in Rikers Island jail, but this didn't lead anywhere. 
then I guess later, while at Auburn Prison, they had a friendly conversation, quotation marks there. After this, apparently, Mateus Reyes felt guilty for the fact that Corey was still imprisoned for the crime he didn't do. So Mateus come forward and confessed. Which, only to Corey. What? Only to Corey, though, right? Like, no, that's when official, he came. Oh, he officially. He came out officially. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he had gotten in a fight with Corey and, I don't know, didn't lead anywhere. So then they had a friendly conversation after that. And I guess maybe Corey said, I'm in here for this, this attack on Trisha yeah. Melee. And Mateus felt so bad that he came forward a, and confessed. This guy's such a conscious now. This is where there's fishiness to me. This is a little weird. And I only say that because could it be, and I am not saying anything officially, but just speculation. Just speculation. It could have been where Mateus confessed because he knew he was going to be in there for life. And maybe, you know, they traded something. They had right. said something. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But it just seems awfully weird that he has this, oh, I'm an angel. I need to come forward now. Yeah. and I, After he met up with Corey. I, I think logically that makes sense, but then obviously we have no proof of anything. Right, we have no proof of nothing. So there's no way, no way to actually know it. But <laughs> right. I mean, logically it makes sense as something that you could possibly do if there, somebody was sure. And maybe that's why there's all there's so many false confessions in general is because people are, you know, like, Hey, uh, when you get out, start sending me what's that commissary or whatever the, the money for, right. you know, while and I mean, we'd have proof of that. I feel like uh, if you're if sending, sending something, it after, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And maybe he didn't follow through with it, <laughs> which <laughs> would have been great awesome. Idea. Great idea. Honestly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, what is he going to do? I'll totally do that when I get out. Right. I don't know. It just seems very weird because he has this guilty conscience now, but he had essayed how many women killed how many women. But maybe he was reformed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't get reformed from that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just, no. Uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah, no, um, there's no reform from that. Right. So, like I said, this seems out of the blue and kind of odd. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just, Weird. Yeah, I can see that. So in twenty or in two thousand and two, uh, Mateus Reyes told officials that the night of April nineteenth, nineteen eighty nine, he assaulted and essayed the female jogger. He was seventeen years old at the time, and the assault he said he committed alone. He said that he had intended to burglarize the victim's apartment. Um, now, remember, he had never been looked at for this crime right. against Trisha. <clears throat> so, Even though he literally committed a crime in Central Park days before. Right. So this is what he says about it. Quote, I know it's hard for people to understand after 12 years why a person would actually come forward to take responsibility for a crime. At first, I was afraid. But at the end of the day, I felt it was definitely the right thing to do. No, <laughs> so, I'm not buying it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that he didn't do it. I'm just not buying that his conscience suddenly. I don't buy that he was going to burglarize her because why did he attack her? Well, and that's, in the middle of that's Central the Park. thing. Like the um, the one the woman before that in Central Park was doing Tai Chi mm -hmm. in Central Park. He wasn't burglarizing her unless he was just like robbing her on what she had on her, mm -hmm. which is the same as the case before that. Right. So, like, he hadn't escalated to the burglary part yet. He also hasn't escalated to murder. Right, unless it was, like, an accident, I guess, because, like, the her injuries, um, this is, like, a kind of recap, but her injuries mm -hmm. were, like, fractures to the back of her skull, right? right. Like, she'd been hit with a branch or... Yep. Uh, so, like, he might have accidentally done too much, because at, at this point... I feel like this always goes on. Like if you don't if you don't catch a serial killer at the beginning, like yeah. they're bad and they make a ton of mistakes at the beginning. Right. And then like they get 
the more and more they do it and the longer it takes for police to catch them, the better they get at like avoiding things. Yep. So, Mateus Reyes provided officials with a detailed account of the attack, details of which were collaborated by other evidence that the police held. The big thing was that his DNA matched the DNA evidence at the scene. It did match? Mm Mm-hmm. Confirming that he was the sole source of the semen found in and on Trisha Melee. I'm about to walk out. (laughs) (laughs) Like that to me is like open and shut. Like what it is. Like he did it. Like Yeah, he did it. And there's no I don't think anyone's denying that he didn't do it. Mateus Reyes definitely did it. Yeah. Now did he do it alone? Uh, with the other people around? Yes. Uh, yeah, but mm, that, that <laughs> I get that part. That part's a little tricky because you would think one of the 40 30 to 40 boys that were there would have been like yeah i saw this dude like like i know he was around us Mm -hmm. like they they could have been an eyewitness to say like he was there and uh, or like said that they saw him in the park said that he was never part of our group and then that would have like absolved the whole group like like we never saw him the whole night like we don't even know who that guy is but I don't know. It just there's so many witnesses. You feel like they would have, and we'll get into that too because there's some on those taped confessions. There is some a couple of the boys mentioning someone else being around. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't know his name, or right. but they had seen that he'd been familiar, and I mean he'd have been in the same neighborhood and around the same people, around the same age. Yeah. Um. So there's just confusion with this. Well, case. and if you have a group that big, I imagine it kind of snowballs to get that big. Like yeah. I'm, I'm probably starts with you know like five, ten, and ends up being like more and more people being like, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" Right. Um. So I left you guys like hanging a little bit, but he did do this. Yeah. Uh, there's no indication that it wasn't him that did it. Like he he was the only semen that was found. Now there's some discrepancy between what was found and what wasn't because the cops did a just horrible job. Yeah, so um, like collecting it. evidence. <laughs> well, and interviewing um, suspects too. Yeah, um, but I mean, it came back to that he he was there. He did sa her. Um, now it's just kind of did he do it alone? Was she like? Did they attack her? Mm-hmm. And he said, "Oh, opportunity." Right. There's a woman now laying there. Right. That he could attack and do things with we don't know yeah and 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 all of it's just very wishy-washy because we just don't know yeah because i mean if you're um if you're an accessory to it you're gonna get it like the same and maybe not the same penalties but you're still gonna get thrown in prison for it so i mean at this point him admitting it it matching and everything it wasn't gonna let them go but they might have gotten lesser sentences Mm-hmm. Or even gotten fully reduced sentences if they were, you know, proven not have anything at all to do with it. Right. Um, so another piece of evidence um, was that he tied up melee with her T-shirt in a way that uh, he had done at other ones. He had done at the other victims. Okay. So the only thing he didn't do that he had done at the other ones was the eye thing, mm-hmm. which he didn't do at the previous. She was. I mean, her eye socket. She, oh. if you remember, I do think her eye socket that. was completely closed in, but right. it was from blunt force trauma, which could which is blunt different. Force, well, blunt force trauma could be him hitting her <clears> in the eye, right? Though, um, which a lot of the other victims were cut, um, right? So maybe he just didn't have a knife. Yeah, <clears throat> this this guy like it seems very impulsive too. Mm-hmm. So like it matches up there too as far as the victim goes because he he just does. He picked these people up in public places, like Central Park, like outside of a church, 
followed somebody going into like the, they're in apartment buildings like it's not like he waited till these people were alone it was like he got an impulse and he did it mm. so i i don't know i mean i could very well see him this is just me making a random theory but i could very well see him just joining in with that group and them you know doing bad stuff but mm -hmm him joining in with that group and be like being like okay well now i'm just gonna do it in front of all these people and everybody right. just being like whoa like what are you doing and they mm -hmm. should have stopped him for right. sure but um what's interesting for me is on the confessions now this could be the coercion part mm -hmm. because in the interrogations it kind of made it seem like the police were like oh we know that your friend did the essay. Mm -hmm. So what part did you have in it? Right. But what's interesting is a lot of the boys said that they held her down mm. or was one to hit her. No one actually. Except for one, right? One of the, was it Yusuf, <clears throat> uh, didn't admit to any of it. Right. Because right. he, you know, got a lawyer, like mm -hmm. His mother was very adamant about a lawyer being there. Right. A lot of them didn't say that they did that essay. Right. Now, of course, they're not going to. Yeah. I mean, obviously. But could it be that they were there and were holding her it down? Could, yeah. could it be that they were there and hit her? Could it be that they had saw something and just were scared? But this comes back to where the police didn't do their job because they're, if somebody is hitting somebody to where there's blunt force trauma to where, like, fractures in the back of her skull, um, you know, bruise, like swollen eye socket, there's going to be blood splatter on those people's clothes. Mm -hmm. And so if they really were holding her down or, or even like her, like, cause we there know now, a lot of blood. we know now with the defensive wounds and things like that, that a lot of times, like there would be other skin under her fingernails mm -hmm. from those people. And one of the boys did have a cut, like, on his face right. and had said, you know, like, you know, at first they said they didn't, that wasn't part of that. And then they said it could have been from that. Right. Um, so I am not blaming anybody, but I do know that they, these boys were in the park conveniently at the same time attacking people. Yeah. And now could it be a coincidence? Absolutely. It was interesting to me that she was dragged because could she have been on the ground incapacitated? They had stole things from her, those boys did, and he just conveniently walked upon it. Yeah. Or was um, waiting for them to attack somebody. I mean, he <clears throat> kind of dragged the first victim somewhat. He, he held her at knife point and took her to a you know, like a stairwell, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he has done that, but at the same point in time, yeah, I mean, it's possible that she was attacked and then he decided to drag her off. I mean, yeah, there's just... There's just so much we don't know. Yeah, and it's... In the end of the day, it, there is some guilt by association, but at the same point in time, too, if there's just somebody who... Um, there's just somebody who joins your group and just does something like yes you they're the way they're guilty in my mind if that happened is they're guilty for not stopping mm -hmm. him and if he didn't join their group and he did it separately of the group completely then it, it's they're kind of not guilty at all if he was never even in their group right it's just he did it and it happened to be while they were causing trouble too yeah so there's just so many options of what could have happened. Yeah. But definitely he is a POS. <laughs> yes. So based on what investigators believe, uh, the essay of Trisha appeared to have taken place in the North Woods area um, after the almost 30 teenagers had all moved south. Um, and the timeline reconstruction of events made it unlikely that any of the boys had joined or did this. That's what they said. Wait, after? So after they said that? <clears throat> they said all of this way after yeah, Matea Reyes confessed. Of, after they were probably all out of prison at that point. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> um, his confession conveniently occurred after the statute of limitations mm -hmm. had passed and the Central Park Five had already served all their sentence. Gosh. Yeah, so basically the police just said they're innocent. Mm -hmm. 
Because they're like, yeah, they oh. weren't even there. Mm -hmm. They weren't even there to be doing part Anything. of it. Anything, right. Yeah. Um, however, Mateus Reyes was in for life either way. Right. Um, after an investigation into the defendant's innocent was conducted in 2002, um, district attorney from New York County, uh, the city withdrew all the charges against the men and the defendant's sentences were vacated. In 2003, the five men sued the city of New York for malice prosecution, racial discrimination, and emotional distress. They reached a $41 million settlement with the city government in 2013, an additional $3.9 million in compensation from the state in 2016. A vacated judgment, also known as a vacar relief, means a previous legal judgment is legally void. So the law is basically saying, you don't oopsie, have a, erase that. Yeah, you don't have a felony on your record anymore. Yep. Like, we can just erase that from oh, existence. that too, yeah. Like, they're, they already did all their time in prison. Yeah. Like we're, <laughs> they're like, oopsie, we're just going to erase all that that happened. Should have pretended then. Are happen. bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it doesn't work that way. Right. Um, because, you know, a lot of these men went the right way. I mean, mm. they, they did Something very like good after this. After, yeah. I mean, all I of them did good after. Um, one of them, I think, did another crime, but like they were pretty, I mean, they did well after. Yeah. And um, it's just, it's horrible because it could have went the other way. Yeah. Uh, yeah this is crazy to me <clears throat> that the police even came back and were like, yeah, they weren't even there. Like, how long did they know that part? Like, right. How long into the sentence did they even, was it before they were even sentenced that right. they were like, oh, well, we know it's not them, but what we already started. Did? Yep. Uh, Mateus Reyes is still in prison. Good. Uh, the, the five men went on to live very productive lives. Some of them are activists. Some of them are just laying low. Um, they were in a very popular Netflix, not, blah, 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 Netflix series, When They See Us, as premiered in 2019. Which is the one I think I watched. Yeah, we you. watched that. Yeah. Um, it definitely got people thinking about racial discrimination and the case again. Um, especially because it was right around 2020 when COVID hit. Right. So we were all watching that as the world was turning and ending. Well, and there <laughs> was a also a lot of other um, racial discrimination yes. cases that happened at that time. Yep. Um, I think there is no doubt that there's discrimination in this case. Um, I will say that with certainty. Yeah. Um, however, I want us to break down this case in a big way. I want us to look at the victim and victims in this case, um, take a look into the facts and the evidence and really decide for ourselves because some things turn this thing upside down and we will explore that next week. Yep. And uh, yeah, I'm the, at the end of the first part, I was very pro the five mm -hmm. and um, at the end of this, I'm still very pro the five. Right. Um, and I hate that, that Reyes guy, Matias yeah. Reyes. I, I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Right. <laughs> um, so it'll be interesting to see what you have for us mm -hmm. um, this next time, because we, I feel like you've laid it all out. I feel like it's the, we're done. <laughs> like, I feel <laughs> like this is, so I don't know what you've got for part three. So I mean, you, you there's any, a, any teasers? There's a lot of people we who believe. A teaser. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who believe the other side. They believe the men had something to do with this. Now, scouring the internet, there's people who believe that they are guilty, but no one is denying that Mateus Reyes did it. That he's really guilty. Right. He's definitely I mean, guilty. he was there for right. sure. DNA matched. Right. But yeah. Um, a lot of people just think that they were there when this crime committed and that they had more to do with it than they say. And the way that media in the recent years has painted these boys as these angels who did right. nothing wrong kind of rub people the wrong way who 
looks at the evidence and says, well, at least they did the attacks on the other people. Right. Like they were not just innocent bystanders completely. Yeah. But, and I said this in the last video, they, they might not have done this. Right. It, it's possible that they didn't do this, but are still not angels. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. possible to have, to be both. To be both. And that's what I think, honestly, like, and even with everything that I'm going to say next week, like, I think you can be both. And I think in this case, some of it seems fishy. So this next, this next episode sounds like it's going to be a lot of uh, theories and allegedly mm -hmm. and, and allegedly Reddit, and, Reddit posts. Yes. And so be ready for a lot of theories mm -hmm. and maybe it'll get you thinking one way or another. Maybe you'll still be on the same side you were before, but right. give it and a listen and find out. <laughs> yes. I do want to say, um, I will probably pull some of your guys' comments from the first episode, yep. maybe the second, depending on when we premiere these things. If you say anything <laughs> off color, I am not going to feature your comment. Yeah. I may delete your comment. Keep it just it. depends on how bad it is. Right. Because no matter what happens, the racial profiling is not right. The, yes. um, if you're, coming on here to say anything racist we're not cool with it like, right just yeah just i don't. want you guys to comment what you're what you feel your honest opinions but i also want you guys to the purpose of me doing it in this format was to make you think differently because if i came on here and i said these four, five guys are completely innocent nothing happened end of story there's no thinking further into evidence, into coercion in these cases. You're just going to make up your mind and be done. I want your opinions on the evidence and what you take from that rather than just looking at the big picture. That makes any sense. It, it absolutely does. And at this point, I, if we just, if you had just done that and we hadn't right. been taking comments and having a discussion and you just said like they're innocent and that's it, mm -hmm. then it might as well just be the Netflix documentary. It might as well. Yeah. Like this is, this is where it's different is you guys get to actually talk to us. You get to have a discussion. You get to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Netflix documentary, you just, you watch it. It's what the story they told you about it and it's done. Mm -hmm. You don't hear anything extra about it. And that's what I, I liked about our Casey Anthony coverage as well is like a documentary can put their opinion in it and right. just be like, here's my opinion. Yeah. Here, we're going to steer <laughs> you the way that we want you to right. go. I mean, if you look at kind of what I did here, the first episode you're going, okay, well, there, are they guilty? Are they not guilty? Then I hit you a second with, okay, they are, they are innocent in this crime yeah at least at least a big part of it they were yes, innocent in. right i want to get your guys's real opinions on it and real feelings on it yeah um i don't want to be like here's my opinion case closed yeah um, right it's not fair yeah because we're at the end of the day we're <clears throat> all operating off the same evidence and maybe you mm -hmm. find some theories out there too that are that we haven't seen before too and right yeah um so keep it Keep it PC, keep it clean, keep it good comments because I want to have this like the Casey Anthony thing and I want to read all your comments and I want to read the Reddit post and I want to get involved in this because this is the stuff that gets you thinking about true crime in a different way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll no, be back for part three. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great one. I'm looking forward to part three. I really do hope you all comment because that will that'll help things a lot because it's cool to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. And this episode goes out to the victims that are getting ignored, that are of Mateus Reyes's, that no so one talks about. There's a lot of survivors. There's a lot of like the kids. Yeah, those kids you know, that were like, in the house. I've thought about that a lot too, how much they had to live through and losing their parent too. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that I was able to tell stories that weren't told before. Yeah, I hope so too. So. Um, yeah, okay. always respect the victims. There's a lot of strong women in this case who mm -hmm. fought through a lot. Every one of them really. Yep. And we'll see you for part three. All right. 
Peace. <laughs> Bye. Everyone take care. Hi guys, I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for Code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button. Help us out, help us grow. Um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. Um, and of course, YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.